UK and uh, I, I think in uh, other, other countries, one of the basic requirements of safety is to follow good practice. And um, IEC 61511 is becoming well accepted as the standard of good practice for safety instrumented systems in the process sector. Therefore, it is close to a mandatory requirement in, 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 in the UK with regard to legal compliance. Um, it's certainly not a, um, a legal requirement in itself, but the re requirement to implement good practice is a legal requirement. Well, the fuel storage industry fundamentally relies on control systems and instrumented safety systems in the prevention of overfill from storage tanks. So it is not surprising that the Bunsfield Major Investigation um, Board looked in the direction of the IEC 61511 standard as a means of conveying um, many aspects um, uh, that are important for, for, for the safety of these installations. The report has been um, accepted by the Health and Safety Executive in the UK and by the Environment Agency. And these regulatory bodies are now working with the industry on a programme of improvements to embed the um, advantages that will be gained from the use of the standard into practical applications in uh, fuel storage sites. Okay. Um, whilst there is still some way to go, um, there is a very positive commitment from the industry um, to embed these, uh, these improvements. Um, and uh, other standards organizations are also looking in this direction. I've been working with the American Petroleum Institute, API, in um, taking forward the standards of IEC 61511 into an API standard on the uh, prevention of um, overfills from, from petroleum storage facilities. I think whilst Bunsfield was a very specific example the, the wider process industry is, um, is seeing the, the benefits of uh, being able to use this standard to set good standards for itself and improve the safety and integrity of its plants. As a representative of Shell, I can add to this that uh, Shell is committed to uh, uh, implement the recommendation of the Bunsfield uh, report and uh, we're working hard on, on doing so. And getting to grips with uh, what the recommendations really mean to us and to our depots and, uh, and uh, the tank farms at the refinery sites. Uh, as a manufacturer, I'd like to add that the recommendations from the Bunsfield over storage uh, uh, accident were also used within Amazon to launch several programs to get more reliability and also more diagnostics within the level measurements. So on that side, we added also to the safety of the process industry. The grandfather clause that we inserted in IEC 61511 and became the American standard, the ANSI uh, uh, ISA 84, uh, was inserted because in our OSHA document, the document we're regulated by in the U.S., uh, is uh, OSHA 1910.119, and it has a grandfather clause for existing systems. So we mirrored that grandfather clause, made a few changes to it, and put it into IEC 61511, okay? Uh, another major reason for that is when uh, IEC 61511 was published, we had an existing standard in the U.S., SP84, which included all the life cycle elements of IEC 61511, except it did not incorporate process hazard review. That was required, but it wasn't part of our standard, all right? Uh, the rest of the standard was similar. So this gave people the uh, ability that had designed their systems to the existing ISA SP84 standard to claim compliance, okay, with the new standard. But it's still up to the owner operator to demonstrate at the end of the day that he's providing the sufficient risk reduction required in the process hazard review, okay. All the other requirements of uh, 
i.e. C-1611, even though you grandfather your system, still uh, are included. Management of change, testing your system, uh, documentation of your system, all that's still required for our plants, even though they grandfather an existing system. Grandfathering is a kind of a unique situation because uh, the minute that 61508 is issued, if you look at it, this immediately uh, makes all of our existing process systems almost legacy systems because in many cases we refer to 61508 in 61511. So that since uh, that standard has changed, one could say that your system has now become uh, obsolete or a legacy system. So it seems to me that this issue is going to have to be addressed in the 61511, and I see uh, I see a global a better global approach, a better the need for a better global approach, global understanding of this, and some clear way of handling it in the upcoming 61511 revisions. The 61511 talks about prior use rather than proven use, and I believe that there are enough um, uh, requirements in the standard which define when a prior use can be claimed and when not. So I don't think it's uh, the, that the, the, the maintenance of the 611 should add requirements uh, in addition to the ones which are already there uh, uh, with respect to claiming prior use. Um, the other question is uh, that uh, if only end users can claim prior use or that also manufacturers can do so. Well, I would say it doesn't really matter who claims prior use for a device as long as it's based on the evidence required by the standard. So if the supplier, a vendor, collects evidence from their clients and based on that claims prior use, the population is only bigger, so that's no big deal. So, yep, the vendors can claim as long as they comply with the requirements of the standard. In the U.S., we interpret the uh, prior use as being the total responsibility of the user because we consider it application specific for the equipment. And there are uh, guidelines and requirements for prior use and the amount of time the equipment is in service in IEC 61511. As a matter of fact, it states that the previous operating time should be sufficient to demonstrate the claim rates of failure on a statistical basis of, of a single-sided lower confidence limit of 70 percent. All right, so you do have to gain data and substantiate that you have the claim limit for your PFD calculation. Uh, there are so many process conditions uh, included in the prior use claim that can only be done by the end user. It's also a matter of uh, liability uh, cases uh, in case something is, uh, is happening and uh, who is then responsible. And I think the standard at this, as it is at this moment puts it very clearly in the scope that only end users can do that. We will see in the next revision, during the discussions, in the next meetings, uh, how we develop the text so that everybody can live with the next revision. Mm -hmm.